the outstanding tie of the fourth round. Could Leeds bounce back to form or would Liverpool keep their recent run going? Commentary from Peter Brackley. Now, good move up from Ziga. And Fowler with a chance. Off the post. Derby on the follow-up and it's there. Liverpool have scored. And maybe now have earned their place in the fifth round. Liverpool captain. He did really well too. And this is Barbie. Can he finish it here? Still Nick Barbie. Played off to Heskey. It's a thumping finish. And Liverpool are through to the fifth round. Despite their recent poor run, Everton still started favourites in this Mersey derby, but Tranmere never saw it that way. Everton's defence pulled apart on 22 minutes, Sean Flynn's cross met by Steve Yates, and Thomas Murren never got near his looping header. The running of Andy Parkinson was proving a constant menace in the first half. 11 minutes later, he set up Jason Kumas, and this time, the chip was too good for Murren. Tranmere were in dreamland, Everton were shell-shocked, and there was worse to come. Yates rising unchallenged to put a gloss on the scoreline. Tranmere's cup heroics of recent years relived, but an appalling result for Everton. A short trip across London for Arsenal. Perhaps they were expecting a searching test from Queen's Park Rangers, but that's not how it turned out. The action described by Peter Brackley. He won here on that near post. Crouch. It's so nearly squeezed it. Was it over the line? Rangers claiming it was. But the referee just turned away then. Neil Barry. Real danger though for Arsenal. They were tottering then against the aerial threat of Peter Crouch. But Dixon now on the counter attack. What's oh, it on goal? It's skidded in. Oh dear, what misfortune there. Well, certainly plenty of talking points here. Lauren. And having got their noses in front, you'd expect Arsenal to go on from here. This is Bear Cap. The Crosco almost brought him down. It's another chance and it's another goal. Wilton. And suddenly Arsenal have taken control. Here's Parla. Now Perez. Cole had ghosted into space. And Wiltord has made it three. Perez to take the corner. Wiltord. It's number four. Crouch and Carlisle hoping to cause some bother here. Not that way they were. Stabbed away by Tony Adams. That was Parler. But first time football from Arsenal far more confident now and it's Perez might go all the way here 5-0 the only professional performance by Arsenal Wiltord getting no sympathy from referee Barry Alviera to Bearcat surely he must be here it's 6 for Arsenal and it's Dennis Bearcat The only question left, given Kingstonian's repeated cup heroics, is how are they struggling near the foot of the conference? Lewis Carey's misplaced back pass was a gift for Phil Wingfield, and the part-timer who doubles as a carpet cleaner 
punish the full-time Bristol City promotion chasers. Kingstonians lead lasted for over half an hour and with almost four minutes of injury time played substitute Tony Thorpe pounced on the loose ball from a corner. He justified the change made by the city boss Danny Wilson and spared his blushes but who dare write Kingstonian off even now. Leicester have become Aston Villa's bogey side in recent seasons. Maybe that's why Villa appeared so edgy. Darius Vassell had already been booked when he lunged in late on Andy Impey. Referee Uriah Rennie didn't need a second look. Villa reduced to ten men with ten minutes remaining in the first half. Leicester then broke through. An elementary ball from Matt Elliott somehow eluded Gareth Barry here. David James couldn't quite sweep up, leaving Adi Akinbayi with a tap-in. Soon it was level, at ten aside that is. Callum Davidson needlessly barging into Steve Staunton here. When the free-for-all calmed down, it was a second bookable offence by Davidson, and he too was sent on his way by Mr Rennie. Not much football played first half, Villa did improve in the second period and were rewarded 15 minutes from time. Substitute Julian Joachim getting the better of Jerry Taggart and firing under Simon Royce. But as usual in these games, Leicester found a little bit more. A clever flick on here by Elliott and Arne Gunnlaugsen finishing superbly to settle a pulsating cut tie. Leicester march on, Villa with little left to play for this season. Sunderland might not be the most stylish side around, but they are one of the most effective. In this meeting of Premier League high flyers, a classic Sunderland goal coming up. Don Hutchison's ball to the back post, headed in by the big setter forward. But this was Danny Dicchio replacing Niall Quinn effectively. Ipswich have their League Cup run to console them. Sunderland still unbeaten at home and powering on in the Premiership and the FA Cup. Southampton saw off Sheffield United in the last round. This time it was Sheffield Wednesday's turn. The Saints got the perfect start in only the tenth minute. James Beattie turning supplier. Kevin Davis getting a second chance at the near post and he was strong enough to take it. Thereafter, Wednesday were mostly second best, but Southampton couldn't finish them off. Worse still, they conceded a soft goal with 20 minutes left. Andy Booth's header somehow crawling over the line. Suddenly, Wednesday looked like getting a morale-boosting draw. And then, for the second cup tie running, Southampton were awarded a penalty, hotly disputed by the opposition. Wayne Bridge drove in the free kick. It definitely hit a hand. The referee decided the hand belonged to Andy Booth. Jason Dodd again showed he had the character for the job from the spot. That would prove the decisive moment. Although there was time for the Saints to add a third on the stroke of full time. Chris Marsden feeding Joe Tessum. And eventually a simple header for James Beattie. It made the scoreline a little lopsided, but riding their luck, Southampton into the last 16 for the first time in five years. Not much to choose between these Premier League strugglers. Three minutes into injury time, Tony Grant's corner headed in by Sean Goater. Coventry had more than had a fair share of it. Manchester City's boss Joe Royal acknowledged that for once, the luck was truly with his side.
There were heroes on and off the field at Adams Park. First, the supporters who'd cleared the snow from the playing surface. Then, Andy Rammel weighing in with his 11th goal of the season. And the snow came in useful after all. But Wolves hadn't lost under new boss Dave Jones and looked unlikely to lose here either. Their fine play was rewarded when Lee Naylor laid on the cross for Carl Robinson to head the visitors' level. But Wickham weren't to be denied one of the upsets of the day. Sam Parkin, Wickham's loan signing from Chelsea, acknowledges that his heading isn't the strong point in his game, but you'd never have known it here. The 19-year-old's goal gave Wickham a place in round five for the first time in their history. The last season's withdrawal from the competition, Manchester United were intent on adding the FA Cup to their trophy hall. The visitors to Old Trafford, West Ham, who contributed to a thriller. Early ball out from Beckham to Cole. Manchester United looking for the classic counter-attack. It's Roy Keane. This is brilliant from Manchester United. Ryan Giggs. Excellent save again from his luck. That would have been the picture book Manchester United counter-attacking goal. What an athlete Keane is. Giggs his equal catching him up. And there was pace in the shot. It's becoming the best FA Cup tie in terms of excitement of the weekend. West Ham just have that little spring in their step here now. And their keeper, when called on, fit or not, has produced two big saves. It's the second of them. Lampard. Joe Cole. Perhaps deployed a little more forward here, second half so far by West Ham, and to good effect. It's Cole! Back off Barthez! Oh, and almost Canute. That was an unbelievable piece of athleticism from Barthez. There was real venom in the shot from Joe Cole. Canute was closing in, and Barthez somehow defied gravity to get a second touch on this. Watch the keeper here. Well struck by Joe Cole. The keeper's on the deck and gets there. Second time ahead of Canute. Two sides who love to knock it around, and each has been able to show the watching world how well they can do that in this game. And so far, West Ham are matching. Di Canio, is he onside here? Will it count? Yes, it does count! And it's the Italian magician who creates the possibility of the cup upset of the round. West Ham go in front at Old Trafford with 15 minutes on the clock and Manchester United are left looking to the linesman. It's been trouble at every turn for Chelsea this season. And even though the FA Cup has been good to them, Gillingham were out to increase the cup holders' woes. Commentary from Gary Bloom. It's a dangerous ball in. Oh, there could be a goal here. Good Janssen has scored. What a dreadful error by Gillingham, who are behind in the few, first few minutes. This is an important time for Chelsea to just keep Gillingham at arm's length. Good Janssen. Zola waits in the middle for a cross if one's coming. Weiss has drawn the attack as well. 2-0 to Chelsea. Wise takes over for Chelsea. Gronkiar to his right, Zola to his left. This is Zola. And they've scratched Gillingham again. It's Gronkiar. And that's number three. 
And that change to a back four just didn't help Gillingham as Jesper Gronkjaer has weighed in with another goal here. Harley. Gronkjaer just slipped at the vital moment. Panic now for Gillingham. King. Oh, and Onora's through here. Might come here to Shaw. Paul Shaw pulls a goal back. Gillingham trail by three goals to one. Great save. 3 2. I told you it might be crucial. And it looks like it is. 93 minutes have elapsed. Two minutes of stoppage time left. This is Harley now for Chelsea. Chelsea leading 3 2. 14 here is Lasso. So hooks it to the back post. It's all over. Good Jonsson weighs in with his second goal of the game. And Gillingham's brave resistance is all over. Bolton's pitch had been the scene of a famous rugby league triumph for St Helens over the Brisbane Broncos just two days previously, but that didn't stop Bolton producing some enterprising football. Dean Holdsworth putting the home side in front on 27 minutes from Nicky Summerby's cross. In Bolton's very next attack, Holdsworth was able to demonstrate his aerial power again. Bolton's second goal in two minutes, leaving Scunthorpe reeling. But Scunthorpe have made a reputation as a side who like to pass the ball around. And they proved it with one of the best passages of build-up play seen all afternoon. Alex Calvo-Garcia left to pull one back for the visitors. The third goal in four minutes. So the fans were getting full entertainment value once more. That meant Bolton couldn't sit back and feel the job was done at half-time. But just two minutes after the restart... Holdsworth completed his hat-trick. And now Bolton could relax. Holdsworth's young strike partner then took over. Kevin Nolan weighing in to make the scoreline distinctly one-sided. And Nolan's second completed a 5-1 win. It also confirmed that Bolton, who reached the semi-finals last season, might yet be a threat this time round. Spurs under George Graham had played out four consecutive nil-nil draws ahead of the cup trip to Charlton. Little did we know the excitement in store at the Valley, watched by Gary Bloom. Bartlett held the ball at Wales. Svensson. Powell arriving here for Charlton, he's got his head on it and scored! Ten minutes in, and Charlton have the lead. Campbell turns, only as far as Rufus. Might come to Svensson, 2-0. Doherty. He's found his way into the box. Oh, Tottenham has scored! Sherwood stands over the ball, so to Stefan Frank. Anderton. What did I tell you? Anderton makes it 2 2. Twice in five minutes now, Spurs have found a goal, and they're through again here, it's three! What an incredible turnaround, it's Ivan Leonardson! It's very positive play by Luke Young. 
And there's an opening here, surely for Spurs. Now, is that going to count? Rebrov's tucked it in. He's onside, it is going to count. And Tottenham now surely through to the next round of the FA Cup. After a nil-nil stalemate in the first game, an early breakthrough for Derby in the replay. Craig Burley's free kick and Chris Riggett rising unhindered to head home. Blackburn emerged for the second half to turn the tie on its head though. Jason McAteer's corner turned back in by Marcus Bent and Gary Flitcroft touching home. That simultaneously seemed to inspire Rovers and deflate Derby. Eight minutes later, David Dunn set up McAteer to deliver a perfect cross and Bent's header was just as perfect. Blackburn in front and next it was Alan Mahan's turn to create trouble on the other flank. He left Chris Riggett standing and earned Blackburn the chance to take a firm grip on the tie. Derby hardly raised a protest about the penalty and the home fans were booing as Dunn coolly stroked home Blackburn's third. Derby roused themselves on 70 minutes, again a precision cross, this time by Paul Boyten. That allowed Stefano Aranio the chance to slide home. But almost from the restart, more embarrassment for Derby. Damian Duff racing clear to send across the perfect ball for Bent to restore Blackburn's advantage. Blackburn two goals clear and already celebrating a place in the fifth round. But they still had time to extend the agony for Derby. Matt Janssen running through alone and firing home unchallenged. The fitting end to a Derby display that their own boss called disgraceful. Rovers enjoying one of their biggest wins of the season. Kingstonian had only been denied an historic place in round five with an injury time equaliser in the first game. This time Bristol City struck earlier, but not by much. 88 minutes had elapsed when Scott Murray managed to fire past Gavin Kelly. Kingstonian left to concentrate on their fight against relegation from the conference. Bristol City riding their luck again. A dour first half struggle at Selhurst Park was transformed just before the interval. Paul Ince's surging run from midfield, setting up Hamilton Ricard to put Middlesbrough in front. And remain on course to extend Borough's run under Terry Venables to 12 games unbeaten. But Wimbledon fought tooth and nail to get back into it, eventually earning a penalty on 73 minutes for a foul by Ugo Ehiog and Neil Ardley levelled with authority. No further scoring in the 90 minutes, but not much doubt as to who wanted victory most in extra time. A pacey counter-attack by Wimbledon here. Jason Ewell given two stabs at the chance in the box and eventually sliding the ball under Mark Schwarzer to put the Dons in front. And the home side wrapped up victory in the second period of extra time. Jonathan Hunt ran on and on and since no one came to challenge him, took a pot shot which somehow squirmed under Schwarzer's grasp. Borough beaten for the first time under Venables, Wimbledon completing a League Cup, FA Cup double over them this season.